Morning all, hope you're well. Welcome to our first edition of the 5am book series. It's uh, 5.12, but uh, please excuse me, I had to get the car open this morning. Um, so two announcements, obviously I'd like to uh, start my first episode of the 5am book series, um, Fabs. Uh, basically a place where I can discuss um, the, the week that's been in a book that I really resonated with and I wanted to share with the community. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, a second announcement is, uh, you know, because I'm up early, I'd like to um, open up my calendar um, officially from 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, the reason being, I want it to be a true value add for my clients. I've had meetings at 7 a.m., 8 um, a.m., and also 6 a.m. in the city. And um, I know my legal professionals that I deal with, partners, barristers, uh, senior associates, etc., um, would appreciate that. Um, and I know I'm going to get some comments about work-life balance and um, etc., etc. But this is a decision um, that I've made because um, you know I really understand the needs of my clients, and I know that um, many of them are already up at this time and making their way to the city. So I want to be available from 6 a.m. Um, before the hustle and bustle starts. I'll be the only mortgage broker specialising um, in finance for lawyers that'll be um, ready to look after you at um, 6 a.m. Um, before the whirlwind of the day starts. So uh, my calendar invite, uh, my calendar, as it were, is open like that. So feel free to book in a time, reach out, and we can um, discuss accordingly. Uh, now, you know, another reason uh, which is ha sort of we've done that as well is, you know, there's something happening today. Uh, you know, I've been, I promised some of my colleagues that I wouldn't mention the name because it kind of scares people a little bit. So let's call it um, He Who I Shall Not Be Named, uh, <laughs> a Voldemort report as it were coming out today. And uh, while the rest of the, the finance world is going in hither and thither and, um, you know, um, contracting, we really want to expand and further add value to our clients. So it's business as usual, we're here to look after you. So with that being said, let's get into the book um, I'd like to review in the 5am book series, um, which is George Soros' Alchemy of Finance. Now, uh, in 1986, George Soros wrote this little book, um, not little book, um, sort of a, a, decent, a decent size in there and quite, um, I guess, complex um, for his approach to investing and his quantum fund that had 18 years of success up until that point with his book and still kept on going well. Um, I'm not going to lie, it is quite a... Uh, bespoke and complicated book and I had to sort of you know, go through it about twice to get my head around it uh, but uh, the main uh, theories that he puts forward is that um, uh, for a long time now uh, economics and finance have been sort of uh, lumped in with science in that it is a formula that you can use, E equals MC squared as it were, good old Einstein there, uh, but Soros says that's erroneous and not the case. Um, you know, science is something that um, scientists want to remove themselves from the experiment, whereas finance and economics, you can't do that because um, there's a human factor involved and human beings make decisions. Imagine if there wasn't a central bank, for instance. Um, also, a scientific theory is one that you can repeat, repeat, repeat um, and attempt to falsify the, the evidence that comes forward, but you can't do so. Um, you can't have that same affordability with finance and economics. Um, so he talks about the law of self um, or sort of reflexivity um, in that there are certain things in the market uh, that um, you can't remove the human element um, from and that's that uh, what we talked about with the the scientist and the, the human being behind it as well but also too um, there's also a, an element of um, the uh, self-perpetuating in the market so uh, there's the uh, two um, influences is that he talks about are uh, regulated and unregulated markets and also um, credit and collateral in that um, again let's refer to Voldemort um, here's a post that we did that um, kind of went viral that was supporting our industry <laughs> at that time um, so in terms of this, so when this report does come out, um, you know, the credit criteria may tighten more credit, 
um, and the availability of lending obviously tightens and thus people accessing collateral um, might find it harder. So it's sort of self-perpetuating. So it's obviously already a sort of declining market. I don't want to bring that up because I don't want to sort of to be to highlight it because there are opportunities, but you know, we're, our property market is declining. Um, but obviously the, the tightening of credit has that effect of um, lowering the ability of people to purchase that collateral or their homes, um, etc. Um, very much enjoyed this book. I'd recommend it to my um, banking um, colleagues, legal clients and LinkedIn connections in finance and it, I'm sure um, you'll all get something uh, from it. And um, yeah, any questions for you, feel free to let me know. And um, thank you for joining us for our first edition of um, the 5am book series. Thanks again all. I'll see you in the city.